welcome to this lecture number 18. Uh, in fact, this is a, it starts with a spillover of uh, lecture number 17 in which uh, a, few, a few topics could not be completed and uh, so that is uh, they are uh, well protection, well rehabilitation and well testing for yield. And after, uh, uh, after dealing these topics, so this lecture will move on to the new module that is uh, on artificial groundwater recharge. And uh, so specifically in this lecture it starts with the concept and uh, methods. And uh, so now let us start with the well, the topic on well protection. And here so this protection, so essentially so it is a process or a mechanism wherein we protect the well water quality. So basically well uh, here we can uh, more precisely we may also write well ground water quality because after all all the wells they do yield ground water only and uh, so this uh, uh, from either uh, existing sources of pollution or uh, potential sources of pollution so which may exist either at or above the ground level or below the ground level. So that means which may exist either above the ground or below the ground. So basically, so this well protection is a preventive as well as a curative uh, process or a curative uh, uh, phenomena. And for existing pollutant pollution sources, it is a preventive, uh, it is a curative uh, phenomena and for potential uh, so pollutant pollution sources it is a preventive uh, phenomenon and uh, there are different types of well protection so depending upon the uh, uh, the purpose as well as the uh, the type of well for which it is as, one, as well as the type of season also so uh, here we can uh, classify so this well protection into three major categories the first one is the what is known as a sanitary well protection as the name itself says. So there is always uh, say the, in the water supply schemes, so there is uh, uh, they are always in uh, gen uh, even though it is unavoidable. So the, uh, the undesirable byproduct of waste water as well as the waste water system. So they will be in and around the vicinity of this. Uh, the water supply system. So therefore, uh, the especially near the wells, so there is a need for protecting the wells from uh, existing pollutants which uh, will be uh, generally found in the waste water system uh, which may be say sewer or which may be any uh, manhole or which may be any other uh, uh, facility or carrying uh, waste water. Uh, that may be a domestic waste water or an industrial waste water or a, a combination of both. So, this uh, so there is a need to protect well from uh, the, the, uh, the protect the well water quality that is the ground water quality and that is precisely known as sanitary well protection. And then coming on to the next is one, so here this is uh, the spring well protection and uh, this is basically a preventive uh, phenomena phenomena wherein a spring which generally uh, releases uh, say uh, possibly the best quality of uh, ground water and uh, so it needs to be protected from potential sources of pollutant pollution so and here so basically it is a prevent it is a preventive uh, uh, process or preventive mechanism. And then thirdly there is also what is known as frost protection. So this frost protection is uh, uh, employed in uh, severe winter conditions in uh, 
cold uh, regions. So here what happens is see in case of winter especially around uh, December, January. So the uh, most of the northern hemisphere as well as uh, that is uh, June and uh, July in uh, uh, significant parts of the southern hemisphere. So they are subjected to severe cold and uh, this problem is getting aggravated because of the impact of climate change and so here what happens is so this uh, many wells they do uh, get uh, affected by this frost. So basically so the wells may uh, fully uh, the uh, ground water which is stored in the wells it may fully freeze and uh, so it may be difficult to that is uh, harness or uh, extract this ground water uh, through this pipeline system which uh, is uh, which starts from the ground water is wells. So therefore there is a need for protecting the wells from uh, getting affected by frost uh, which may uh, stop or which may break the continuity of uh, water supply scheme in a cold region especially during winter seasons. So now coming to this uh, sanitary well protection, so let me discuss here the, uh, the one typical uh, uh, schematic diagram of a sanitary well protection wherein a well is uh, protected from uh, an existing source of uh, pollutant. And here so this one so the schematic diagram for uh, a sanitary well protection system. And uh, here say the so in this case system say say for uh, existing pollutants at surface level. Of course, so this is reasonably simpler. But if the pollutants are existing at the subsurface level then it makes it uh, much more complicated. So in this case, so here let us uh, so this is the ground level Of uh, course, here it is uh, generally wells, they may not have uh, this kind of uh, upward mount, but maybe for protection. So, it may be this one. So, this is the ground level, and uh, here this is the so the piezometric surface or uh, the water table. This is WT. So that is piezometric surface and uh, here so next we will uh, in this case so there is the well which may have say a kind of uh, a casing and then so there may be so this is a so this casing will extend even below the this 
this one also and uh, so here we may have a foot wall and uh, so this is uh, further we may have a so this is the the lower most portion is the screen and then so this is the screen cap just at the bottom of this one and uh, so this is uh, so this is the foot wall so this is the screen and uh, so here so again so let me show this with a casing is a, and let me show this casing with the of course uh, maybe in the union day So let us say this well is uh, drawing its water from uh, unconfined aquifer as well as confined aquifer and here in this case say this is the, the confining layer which is the bottom confining layer for the unconfined aquifer and the top confining layer for the confined aquifer. And uh, so this is a and here so this is the unconfined aquifer. So this is a so here you can say this is a slotted casing. And uh, here, so this continues again. So, this is a casing, and here, this is a regular casing. And then so this is the foot wall screen and then uh, so here there is a so now so this is there is what is called a grout seal so this is a cobble drain so here this is also cobble drain and then this is the grout seal with the cement concrete grouting and uh, followed by and so here let us say this is the and here let us say So this is the outlet, so this is the outlet and uh, above this so there is a pumping unit, so this is P, so this P represents pump unit.
and uh, in this case so this is the grout seal and so this the dimension of the grout seal may typically vary uh, say and here it could be so the formation could be clay and so this is a and here this is a confined aquifer so like this so here what this uh, the grout seal which is uh, which almost extends up to the the normal water table level as well as the cobble drain which is in and around uh, this one the grout seal so this which is a cement concrete uh, grout seal so this is a uh, So, this will prevent as well as the modification in the ground slope, uh, so that the water, uh, the uh, the polluted water, does not get uh, seeped or infiltrated into the well, and then uh, thereby uh, that is uh, that is uh, causing the deterioration of the ground water quality. So here, uh, so this is a. So, here let me also write uh, this is the modified land profile or say ground profile and then so this grout seal as well as cobble drain. So, this will they will uh, eventually succeed in um, preventing the, uh, the water uh, from this. So, now let us go to the second uh, schematic diagram for uh, spring well protection. In this case, it is uh, let us say schematic diagram. So, in this case, so let me so draw this is the top view and then uh, so here let me draw the front view. So, in the top view, so essentially we have So, there is a an overflow pipe so this is a overflow So, you may want to denote this one. Next, there is a to storage. So, there is also another pipe which takes to storage. So, this is uh, to storage. So, there is a third pipe which will take the water which is uh, basically a clean out drain. So, this is a uh, 
and in the front view, so obviously the clean out drain has to be at the bottom, the storage has to be in the middle and the overflow has to be at the top. So this is obviously common sense and uh, so here in the top view and uh, in this case another thing that is uh, a, a screened drain and in this case there is a so here this is the screened drain and uh, so these are uh, wall and box and next is so here there is a a pipe which runs a perforated casing pipe so essentially this is a so this is a perforated pipe And then there is also a surface water diversion ditch so this is the surface water diversion drain or say ditch and then so here there is a, a barbed wire fencing or uh, any other uh, suitable fencing. So this is the fence. So this is in the top view and now let me show the same thing in uh, the front view. So here so that is a uh, So this is the so here you have the MWL maximum water level and uh, and uh, so this is a so here there is a screen drain and uh, this one so there is a so this wall box so this is a clean out so this is a clean out drain here which is in the to uh, this one and the top view and this is in the front view and this clean out drain so this will uh, take you and here you have that uh, screened so this is the clean out drain and then followed by the storage so for the storage so there will be 
a pipe. So this is a to storage. So here this is the wall. And of course, here also there is a another screen drain is required. And then, so there is just above the, the maximum water level, so there is a this uh, overflow wall, overflow pipe. So this is overflow. just above the maximum water level and here in this case the that perforated pipe so it uh, runs like this and then so here this is the perforated pipe and uh, in the elevation so this will be so this is the perforated pipe in the front view and uh, here we have so this is the the drain so this is the ground level so in this case let us say so this is our ground level so this is the wall to be operated obviously both the walls have to be above the ground and uh, here so this is the so it goes like this and uh, so here there is a brake line and uh, so in this case so there is this surface ditch or drain and then followed by a fence here so this is a typical uh, spring well protection system so here in this case so any potential uh, this one so the pollutants are uh, removed through the surface water drain and then so this uh, through the perforated pipe so only clean water is allowed to enter the spring and then uh, so that is uh, okay so this is a, uh, the front view of a typical schematic diagram for uh, spring well protection so next this uh, frost that is uh, frost drainage i'm sorry frost uh, well protection so this is a very common especially in the winter season in uh, uh, cold uh, areas and uh, so here obviously so there will be a mechanism to ensure that the water temperature does not fall below the freezing point and thereby the, the water supply is ensured uh, even on the coldest uh, of the winter day and of course uh, whatever precautions we take so that is nature always shows that uh, it is the real boss many times and then so the the cold winter storm so you know how difficult it is especially in cold regions so that is uh, so this completes the well protection and now we will go to this uh, well rehabilitation and uh, so in this uh, So in this well rehabilitation, so basically it is uh, it is the process of uh, ensuring
maximum recovery of the well groundwater production capacity loss due to various reasons by employing mechanical stroke chemical and other means basically what happens is in uh, well rehabilitation so uh, with time generally there is a very uh, significant there is a strong possibility that the the well production capacity or the yield or uh, the specific capacity so it goes on uh, decreasing so in this well rehabilitation what is done is appropriate uh, mechanical uh, procedures or appropriate chemicals or even other uh, means are used so that the loss the uh, most commonly observed loss in the well production well groundwater production capacity is uh, minimized so thereby so most of the uh, the well uh, the lost production groundwater production capacity of well is uh, restored so that is a uh, well rehabilitation and of course uh, so many times so this is uh, even before we ensure that the production capacity of a well is restored we need to ensure that the pump which is extracting the water from the well is uh, uh, properly functioning so before identifying the reasons for uh, loss of uh, well production capacity we need to make sure that the pump used for extracting ground water from the well is functioning satisfactorily so this is a very important uh, uh, point so once we ensure that the pump is functioning pro uh, properly so only then we can attribute any loss in the well capacity to various uh, that is a uh, subsurface phenomena which might be taking place below the ground level which uh, as a result of which the well the ground water production capacity of the well has uh, received a significant uh, beating so this is a uh, well rehabilitation and uh, so here say some of the uh, uh, most commonly that is a commonly used well rehabilitation methods for uh, different aquifers here 
will uh, say this is a method. So, let us briefly, so this is, uh, so this is by, so this is courtesy Erickson and uh, so this is, uh, it was proposed by Erickson in 1961. So, here this is the, the first column represents method and then uh, say this is a unconsolidated aquifers then consolidated sandstone and then lastly consolidated limestone. So, these are the three different formations and for each of them, so how the method, uh, so the first method is that here you can also say this is serial number. The first is the, uh, it is known as muriatic acid and this uh, and chlorine Cl2. So, this uh, in case of con unconsolidated aquifer, it uh, removes Fe, S, then CO3 deposits that is carbonate deposits. And uh, whereas, the same muriatic acid uh, followed by chlorine, okay, so this is uh, for a consolidated sandstone not usually effective. And similarly, for a consolidated limestone, so this is a sometimes effective, best results when uh, obtained by that is uh, pressure acidizing so this is one uh, one and then followed by the second method is uh, polyphosphate followed by chlorine dynamitic followed by chlorine dynamiting and uh, this one in case of uh, unconsolidated aquifer it uh, removes fine silt comma clay or say colloids clay clay and uh, this one that is a disseminated shell etcetera. Whereas, the same thing again uh, here uh, in case of uh, consolidated sandstone, so this polyphosphate uh, as well as chlorine dynamiting that is also not uh, usually effective and here also this is in this case also this is a uh, not usually effective. 
So, like that, so there are uh, other uh, this one that is methods are all there that is uh, other four more methods are there. So, the remaining well rehabilitation methods using that is one compressed air, two that is dry ice that is uh, obviously solidified uh, carbon dioxide and then third is a surging chlorine and followed by lastly the caustic soda. that is the NaOH. So, these are uh, also used. Uh, so, the so this will uh, uh, complete this well rehabilitation of course, uh, for want of time we are not able to give uh, much uh, this one and next we will go to that is the well uh, testing for yield. So, in this case, so this is a very important aspect of uh, um, well in and here. So, what is done is the yield is tested by appropriate uh, by using appropriate methodology using the appropriate uh, um, that is materials and uh, okay and so therefore here so this uh, uh, this pumping generally done by using a, a pumping equipment. And in this case, so a typical so this pumping equipment, so which may be uh, uh, say for shallow wells and uh, say for uh, deep wells. For shallow wells, the pumping equipment will be different. So, it uh, we may use uh, say a centrifugal pump, whereas for deep well, we have to use sub submersible, I am so excuse me submersible pump that to multi stage uh, submersible pump say for example, here that is uh, centrifugal pump may be used in this case that is uh, multi stage. may be used and uh, so here let me show you a typical that is a uh, method for uh, well yield testing for a 
शैलो वेल so here what is done is so suppose this is the let me start to my new this one this case a, a typical uh, so this is the ground level and here we have the well and uh, here we have the pipe so through which so this is a storage reservoir so this is a, here you can say this is the the water supply this one so this is a storage reservoir and then this is the pump and uh, this is the ground surface and then the static water table so here uh, this is the water table and uh, after this pumping so the so there will be a formation of cone of depression and uh, this is this one and below this so there is a screen and uh, here so the typically so this is the pump axis and from the pump axis so this is the storage water level and here let me indicate the water level in the one and uh, so here what happens is this is a like this so this is the elevation so in this in this graph so this vertical axis represent elevation then uh, so this is the frictional loss and here so in this one if you plot the so of course uh, here uh, so this is the discharge and then this is the drawdown and in this case this discharge versus drawdown so this curve will be having a something like so this kind of a plot and uh, this one is the static head or suction head so you take this one so this is the and of course so this is a a typical
shallow well yield testing setup. And obviously, so here this is the so so this completes and obviously as we go for uh, deeper uh, tube well so then we have to go for uh, say submersible pumps that could be multi stage submersible pumps and uh, so on so therefore it uh, uh, complicates things this one whereas uh, that's why to avoid this complication so a simple uh, uh, this is a, a typical shallow well yield testing equipment is uh, uh, shown in the schematic diagram so this will complete the chapter on uh, uh, that is uh, that is the well hydraulics and uh, I'm sorry the module the third module on well hydraulics and uh, so I also take this opportunity to start this uh, the new module that is uh, artificial ground water recharge which is uh, so this is a uh, module 6 and uh, so the advanced well hydraulics is the third module which uh, we discussed till now so the uh, the modules 4 5 as well as uh, 7 and 8 will be uh, dealt by my colleague professor anirban dhar and i will be uh, in this lecture as well as uh, in the subsequent two lectures i'll be discussing briefly this artificial groundwater recharge and here let us uh, come to this concept whenever there is a inadequate natural ground water recharge artificial ground water recharge needs to be employed to create water security and uh, here so coming to this uh, so this is the basically the concept and uh, coming to the the other uh, this one and we'll in the next class we will discuss with the uh, the methods of uh, this one and there are various methods like uh, and the surface level spreading and uh, uh, other methods are there and uh, creating this uh, artificial mounts uh, recharge mounts or uh, induced recharge and uh, various things are there so which we will be discussing in the uh, in uh, the next lecture so i thank you and uh, so we'll uh, uh, meet for the next lecture thank you